makes sense. And it goes straight back. Like, what? what? That can't be real. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. This is the world of illusions, and they offer a unique window into how your brain works. Because the reality that you and I experience every day isn't what you think it is. What colour are these two different shapes? Uh, the top one is black and the bottom one is white. OK, you sure about that? Yeah. Oh, so the what top is one I'd say is grey and the bottom one is white. The bottom one looks white because it seems like that the shadow yeah. is casting it, but the other one looks grey yeah, yeah. because the light is shining straight on it. Let me show you something. I've got two square grey pieces. Are they the same colour? We both agree? Yes, they're, they're the same, the same colour. colour. Okay. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Would you agree that this is the same colour as the top square? Yes, same colour. And would you agree that this is the same colour as the bottom square? <laughs> yeah, that's the same colour. Can you believe that these two are actually, in fact, the same colour? Um, if I look away and then look back, probably. Yeah, I probably have to... Yeah, I can't unsee it now. <laughs> Even knowing all that, looking at it, they still look uh, different. Does it blow your mind? It does blow my mind, yeah. How is that possible? No matter how long I spend looking at this image, I still see that grey is white and grey is black. Somehow, the context around the buttons, the light and the shadow, creates the illusion of black and white. It's like my brain is constructing the reality I see. Your job at home is to focus on the cup with a jelly bean underneath. With nine cups on the move, it won't be easy. How do you think you went? Did you follow the cup with the jelly bean? If you did, you may not have seen everything that was going on. For example, who saw this mysterious fifth hand? And the blue cups that turn into green cups. Or this fluffy toy fox. Why does this exercise work? Why don't people see the fox, the colour change in the cups, or the mystery fifth hand? Yes, it's pretty amazing. This demonstration really effectively shows how big are the gaps in our perception. And these are the gaps that magicians exploit with their tricks. So why do these gaps exist? Probably because uh, otherwise our brain would get overwhelmed with the processing of all the information. When our attention is absorbed in a task, we notice little else. Our brain fills in the rest of our visual field and new information doesn't make it in. And that's not all. Who at home noticed that Branka and I are now both wearing different clothes and ended in a different location from the start of the scene? We are simply not aware of information that is right in front of our eyes. This fox isn't magical. It's not invisible. But chances are, if you're watching for the jelly bean, you didn't see it. It wasn't there because while we believe we see everything in front of us, that's not how it works. What actually happens is only small pieces of the visual world are represented uh, in the brain and then put together to create this uh, illusion of the seamless experience that is rich in detail everywhere. Kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, putting it together. Exactly. Important fragments of visual information are pieced together by our brains. At any moment, we can only see a surprisingly small amount in high resolution. Up 
think of these puzzle pieces that we do actually see? Though everything is represented on our retina, the window of highest resolution is exceedingly small. If you extend your arm, the size of your palm at your arm's length is perhaps the, the, the good resolution window uh, to the external world. So you're saying we can see the world in detail only in this size? In the greatest spatial detail, the highest sort of like, you know, focus is there. It's true. As I focus in on my hand, it's all I can see in clear detail. The rest of the world is blurry. So the more you focus on something, the less information you take in in your periphery. Exactly. First, we make a face that breaks the geometric rules. You copy me. <laughs> because it's concave or hollow. So if you just cover one eye... <laughs> you can move your head around. Whoa! <laughs> That's so weird. Stop following me! <laughs> why, why is he following me like that? Because we're breaking all the rules, so our brain doesn't really know what to create. <laughs> so it creates this very strange illusion. It's so weird. The movement that you're seeing is an illusion. Oh. <laughs> Your brain is trying to account for the fact that you can see all the features on this hollow face no matter where you move your head. A face should be convex, and these aren't. So yeah. How do you reconcile that? So just make something up. This is because our brains have learnt that on a convex or rounded face, the features would become obscured to our eyes as we move. It's trying to create something that thinks works. And our, and our brain's kind of having a, a flip out, a yeah. wig out. <laughs> <laughs> to reconcile the rule with reality, your brain makes the face appear to move. So why can't we see things as they really are? I know this is an illusion. Professor Mark Williams studies how our brains have evolved, not to see reality, but something much more useful. Our brains have actually evolved so that we see meaning in the world, and we do that based on rules that are out there that are universal. What do you mean by meaning? Well, what's really meaningful for us, if you like, we've evolved to actually see in the world. So if you look at the surfboard, there's shadows around the surfboard, which tells our brain that the surfboard is actually a 3D object rather than being just a flat surface. And we also see that in the face. You know, there's something universal about all faces, regardless of whether you've got one eye, two eyes, you've got a broken nose. What do you think that might be? Well. Judging by your surfboard comment, I'm guessing, is it that your, your face is convex like this? That's correct. All our faces are convex. And when we break that rule, some really weird stuff happens. 